Hey, welcome to everybody. This is Sports Side News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a preview to the Chicago Wolves versus Milwaukee Admirals. As the Wolves have Alex Lyon, who of course won the award with the Chicago Wolves for the fewest goals against by a team in the regular season, and the Admirals have great goaltenders and youngster Devin Cooley, who stepped up while Connor Ingram was up with Nashville before they got swept by the Avalanche. And now that Ingram's back down, they got a very good dynamic duo of a youngster and an AHL that's now would be labeled an AHL veteran that's really starting to develop himself into an NHL backup in Connor Ingram. However, the Wolves have one of the deepest rosters in hockey and one of the best AHL netminders in Cage who continue to be that this year and in the first round of the playoffs. This year, Lyon uh, had a whopping uh, 18 wins with a 216 goals against in the postseason. He dropped it all the way down to a 134 against the Roxford Ice Hogs in the Battle of Chicago and a 939. He's going to be going up against a team that just took down the Manitoba Moose to the Milwaukee Admirals, who's coming in feeling good about themselves. Both teams played on the 15th, so even though one took the full five to take down their opponent, the other um, just took three games to take down theirs. They are both coming in with the same skating game playing skating legs, so it's not like the ECHL where one team, because of a sweep, has way more days off where the other team doesn't, so the other team might come in with more skating legs. That's not the case when it comes to this series because you have the um, Chicago Wolves who played on the 15th after sweeping Roxford, and then that is exactly when the series ended when the Milwaukee Admirals were able to take down their opponent. This is going to be a very fun series to watch because when you have two teams that are as hot as the Admirals and also the Wolves who are obviously the team that... um the team that a lot of people have pegged as the favorites to win the Calder Cup. Well, the Admirals are going to try to take them out just like they took the Moose out. As for the Admirals this far this postseason, Tommy Novak has been absolutely stellar as a passer. He's basically the assist maestro for them, where the goal-scoring maestro this far has been Braden Burke, who has been able to consistently score for them. And then Cole Schneider has been able to do more so on the assist side, but playmaking, he's been able to do big time. Same with Huntington, same with Parsinen. And uh, even Cole Smith has chipped in some, and Cody Glass has had those moments where I thought from watching he's looked better on the ice, just hasn't fully in his three games got on the score sheet, but has had puck battles, boxing guys out, doing all the small things. Now it's just about trying to get to the bigger things for Cody Glass, which will be getting on the score sheet. This is going to be a very tough series for the Admirals. Obviously the favorite is the Chicago Wolves coming into the series. I do think, though, the Admirals did with how well they were able to goaltend, and also, for the most part, just D up in this postseason, have put this at least closer to a 60-40, leaning towards the Chicago Wolves, which which is a godsend and also a huge compliment towards the Admirals for them being able to do that. Where I would say you have to have Novak continue to be the great facility. Burke is going to have to continue to do his things, but you're going to need guys like, say, even the Rocco Grimones that have been around for a while had kind of had like a little bit of a down year. You're going to need someone like him to step up. You're going to need the Cole Smiths to step up even more. You're going to need Cody Glass to not just do the little things, but actually get on the score sheet. And I would say those are the things they're going to need because they do have solid defense, and they have solid goaltending. They got McLaughlin, they got Biega um, on defense. Same with Tennyson, who's been down there for a minute in the AHL. So they got a good defense. They got good goaltending with Cooley and Ingram. I think it's 60-40 in this series, but now we're diving over to Paul Tarowski's team, one of the best players in AHL during my lifetime, Andrew Paul Tarowski, who continues to succeed and got his debut with the Carolina Hurricanes, and youngster Jack Drury are their two leaders in the playoffs this far, as well as Stefan Nosen and Joey Keane, who Keane is their assist maestro, as well as Paul Tarowski, Keane from the defensive end, and Paul Tarowski from the forward core. Either assist maestros and the goal scorers that have been able to get it done from them in that department have been Nosen, Smith, and Drury in that first round. This team is just so ridiculously deep, though. Even uh, Kavon Fitzgerald on defense, solid defense, but can jump up. Um, Max, Le <clears throat> Max LeJoy is good at jumping up on the play. Ponomarayev is a very good young player. Gundler's also a solid young player. And then, of course, Lyon is kicking behind. So I would say that this team... The, the vastness and deepness and the money they're able to spend on the guys like the Podorowskis, like the Nosens each season, really tends to, and the C.J. Smiths that are good AHL veterans, 
tends to really put this team over the top. I think the Admirals deserve all the credit for making a close stretch 60-40, but they're really going to need the Burks, Novaks, and Schneiders, and the Huntingtons, their veterans, to really carry them, the Biegas of the world, um, to really be able to kind of carry them in this one, or Matt Tennyson as well on defense, and be able to really D up to have a chance, because I do think, unfortunately, in this best-of-five game, or this is the last best-of-five before we go back to best-of-seven in the Commons Finals, Chicago is going to have the benefit of the doubt. They're starting at home. I see them, they, they, they're whopping at home, and I see them continuing that, and I see Lyon continuing his success. But I could see these games being pretty low scoring in a lot of them just because I do see great goaltending matchups where it might just kind of become who's able to get over the hump and get that next goal there, basically, um, in that one. Like, it could even be like that Rangers-Carolina game yesterday for people that... Um, watch that since the Wolves are the Carolina Hurricanes um, team where the Canes were not really able to get a lot of goals and even the first game it was more of a defensive goaltending affair more so defense where it was a two to one win on that Ian Cole goal by them and then it was two to nothing on the lone regular goal by Brendan Smith of all people yesterday and then Ajo so on the empty net so I think the Wolves series could play a little bit similar to oddly enough what their parent club's doing because I do think I do think the Admirals have a chance to defend them pretty well, and that's the best chance they have. Play one of those kind of ugly defensive games and then get yourself going offensively through the Novaks of the world. And then I think you'll be set there through the even Olivier, who's the kind of a guy that you want to see step up. He played for Nashville a little bit in the past in the playoffs, but he's a guy that's a playoff-type player. You want to see him step up, and the Burks and the Schneiders. If you can run through them and just play kind of that ugly along the boards, piss off the other team defense that you see the Stars play at time, that you saw even the Nashville Predators, the Admirals, a minor league affiliate play a lot of time. That's what I think they're going to be able to beat the Wolves, but I don't see that being able to happen consistently enough for them to be able to beat the Wolves. That's why I put it at 60-40, but still have to lean with the Chicago Wolves. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please can you subscribe down below. Above on the easy to keep channel going to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June.